Well, this morning we are catching up with actor Jesse Eisenberg. Latest project is something of a little different nature. It certainly is. It's an audible original, part novel, part play that he wrote and performed in. It's called When You Finish Saving the World, and it's out today. Jesse joins us from Bloomington, Indiana, to tell us all about it. Good morning, Jesse. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for having me on your show. So, uh, you know, before we get started, you are in Bloomington now, but we hear you actually got stuck in L.A. when this whole lockdown started. How did you get home? What was your experience like? It was, uh, yeah, the strangest, like, two weeks of my life, um, which uh, started in Los Angeles. So you can imagine how strange it is compared to just being in Los Angeles in general. Um, so, yeah, my wife and we have a three-year-old son. Uh, we wanted to get back to Indiana. Uh, so we um, yeah, rented an RV and kind of drove across this very empty country to get back uh, home. <laughs> I'm sure that was a road trip you'll never forget. And uh, you're, you're also volunteering a lot during the pandemic. C can you share what you've been up to, what you've been doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. When the kind of when the country shut down, um, we were involved with a, a domestic violence shelter in Bloomington, Indiana, called the Middleway House. And so when the country shut down, we decided to come to Indiana to volunteer at the shelter because um, a lot of their volunteers are students because uh, this is on the campus of IU. And so when the students went home, when classes shut down, uh, this domestic violence shelter lost their uh, volunteer base. So we came uh, back here and uh, I've been you know, here for about five months, uh, painting, cleaning, and also uh, doing fundraising. Wow. wow, that's really cool. Well, uh, let, let, let's talk about the Audible original. You have three different characters, three different periods of their lives. Uh, how did you come up mm -hmm. with this? Uh, well, you know, a friend once told me that uh, he had trouble kind of having an emotional connection to his newborn daughter. And, uh, you know, I, I heard that. And I thought it got to be such an interesting character to explore because it's such a you know, such a sad, uh, you know, experience to have, especially because I'm a new father and I knew what the connection was with, uh, you know, my son immediately. And so I thought oh, it'd be interesting to kind of explore that character. Um, but my background as a writer is in theater and there was no way to kind of explore that in uh, theater because when you uh, write about a baby in theater, um, you know, they usually just put a speaker in a blanket um, and that's the, uh, that's a play with a baby in it. So um, when I met these great producers at Audible and they told me about this kind of new form of, um, you know, this new format um, where it was fiction written exclusively for audio, I thought this is the perfect way to explore that character. And then the project snowballed into uh, kind of um, this epic project uh, following three characters over the course of 30 years uh, in this town. So you play Nathan. He's a new dad. Uh, and you already talked about the differences as far as as connecting with your child. But but what other similarities or differences are there with your character? <laughs> um, hopefully, uh Hopefully only the, the positive ones, because um, the character is like really struggling to have any kind of <laughs> emotional response to this child. Um, and, uh, you know, and then it's compounded by the fact that he's like kind of punishing himself for not having the emotional response to the child. Um, uh, and, um, you know, but luckily, because uh, I was a new dad when I was writing it, I had all these, you know, little you know, insights into the practical nature of raising a kid in this town in Bloomington, which is this unbelievable town of both like kind of, uh, you know, it's in a kind of, um, you know, it's in a bit of a bubble because it's kind of a college town. Uh, and so there are all these kind of fun, quirky aspects of this town that I incorporated. Um, and the book takes place from the year 2002 to all the way in the year 2032, which I kind of projected mm -hmm. based on you know, my research on future, uh, you know, philosophies about what, you know, what's going to take place in the future. But it all takes place in this very kind of quirky, unusual town in Indiana. So the project is six hours long. How, how do you think it should be digested in small portions, binge <laughs> the whole thing in a six hour sitting? I'd imagine it's pretty personal. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's really strange because when I'm writing for theater, um, you have a pretty good sense of how long an audience can sit in their seats for and what kind of dramatic needs are required, you know, over the course of like a two hour experience. Um, with this, it was a totally new format. I didn't know how 
you know, it would be digested, listened to. So I kind of, yeah, hope whatever is the most comfortable for people. You know, I've been like painting for eight hours a day. And, you know, so I listen to like 45 podcasts and I can pay attention so much more easily when I am doing something else. So that might be, you know, it might be the kind of thing that you multitask to and are, um, and are actually kind of, you know, better focused because, uh, I don't know, something strange about listening to something and kind of, I don't know, when you're distracted with something else, I don't know, for some reason, for me at least, it has like a kind of better, more focused approach. Yeah, and it makes it makes the time go by uh, much faster. But what, what's also yeah. fascinating, Jesse, this thing's already been announced uh, that it'll be a movie starring Julianne Moore and Finn Wolfhard uh, and produced by Emma Stone. That's That's got to feel pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, I adapted like a small portion of this story. Um, it takes place primarily at a domestic violence shelter here, um, a world that I feel like I know well and that I would love to see in movies more frequently because it's a really special place. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, right now, it's that much more important, uh, you know, as domestic violence rates are on the rise, but shelters are that much more important and, uh, you know, and they are open and available. And um, yeah, so the movie takes place there. And we're shooting actually in uh, Manitoba, Canada, where the virus is, uh, you know, allowing movie productions to shoot because it's very low. Hmm. Well, Jesse, you are certainly keeping yourself busy out there in Indiana. Thank you so much for talking with us this morning. Thank you so much, guys, and thanks, and stay safe, please. Absolutely, you too. And When You Finish, Saving the World is available on Audible now.